Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 82 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. Uh, I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek, in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, boosted and waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego, a.k.a. Scott Housen, a.k.a. Scotty Too Hottie, a.k.a. Spanky, a.k.a. The Traitor, a.k.a. One Half of the awesome wrestling duo that is Bullet Club Old. Now bow down to me. And with me as always is... The thing is, Scott, no one can bow down to you because you're that short, so is Rob. So it would only be other munchkins. Actually, I think you two are part of the lollipop guild, if I recall. We the lollipop guild, the lollipop guild. That's the outfit you wear as you are in the ring. With him, as always, is Heather Powell, formerly that bitch, but no longer that. And Scott's pretending to sleep because even his girlfriend thinks his intro is too long. Like, even Erica's on my side that you are long-winded. Anyway, Heather Powell I'm... coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, go ahead. Are you finally done with your long-ass intro? Good lord. <laughs> I'll say, I don't know where you and Erica are getting this from. My intro is just nice, short, sweet, and to the point. I don't know um, where this whole long-winded intro thing is where you two are making fun of me about it. Erica, she assured me there's lots of things that are sweet with you. So that's, you oh. know, it's, yeah, I know. I was waiting for the short and sweet part because of how Oh, no, I'm. that, no, no. <laughs> or I'd be like, short. Sure. Hey, as long as everyone gets where they need to, Scott. No <laughs> one actually, because we're talking about sex, because that's what we talk about here well, on this we, podcast. We talk about sex? Well, we're both virgins. <laughs> so I am. We're, we're both just hoping that one day that special person will come around that we can give I, our special little flower to. I cannot wait. You know, like I didn't, I, I just, I just want my virginity to mean something. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Poor Erica. She got to learn what a slut I was firsthand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that part's not an act. Well, okay, it's a bit of an act. I'm not that much. Like, I don't bang everything that moves. I percent that I do, but I actually, and I don't definitely party as hard as, you know, I percent that I do. And just one big liar. Boss, well, bottom line is, you can't believe anything I say. Yeah, because I mean, to get everybody caught up, you know, the last time we recorded was May 5th. It is now June because 2nd. Because of Scott. No. Just we're clear. No. Scott said, I don't care about Friday Nightmares. All I care about is YouTube channel. <laughs> it was not me. You even said, hey, let's hold off a week or so because I'm really busy at work. Well, and we were both busy. We were. We were busy. But you, you even, a, you like said, hey, can we just push it back a bit? And, you know, I did I that for you. Uh-huh. I did that because I'm a friend. <laughs> That's a friend why. that people on this uh, that listen to our show don't know. A friend that turned her back on me and turned heel with Tim fucking Davis. Joining you know, it the was a losers, long time coming. The NWO. I, all I see is champions. I don't see any losers. Losers. You know what? I, I think people only say that when they're basically writers for the WWE because you can't come up with any more material to burn Tim and I. Tim, Tim's my man. Oh. I've always said he comes from Hot Australia, and that's now the name of the country because Tim lives there, Hot Australia. Which is funny though, because uh, listening back to this latest episode that I'm just about to release, you sure were talking a lot of shit about your new tag team partner. Well, you had to do that. We had to fake it. Of course we did. That's what good writing is, Scott. I'm sorry that you don't know that that's how it works in good the wrestling writing business. My ass. That you're not aware. It explains your horrible taste in films as well. That you can't acknowledge. Says the one that's tw- uh, gaslit by 2023. Which, because of that, we are creating a new award. Uh, <laughs> what was the movie that gaslit, gaslit our uh, po- podcast co-host? Poor Scott. He's got like a list for me. He's going to be like, Heather, 
There's too many movies here. We're going to be going on for hours on all the films that gaslit you. A million um, honorable mentions. I love that, that you always say 2023 gaslit me. It actually makes me really laugh every time you say it. Because I find it really funny. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not far from the truth. <laughs> and my chair has been so creaky. I switched it because, yeah, I've had this really creaky office chair. But it must be because they knows I'm going back to the office, to which Rob Humphrey messaged me privately and told me what a bum I was for not being at the office for three years. Um, yeah, Rob, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you tell Don't her, cares, Rob. Rob. No, Rob, Rob is was... my, Rob is part of the Bull Club old, and you tell her, Rob. Give her shit. She but turned Rob, on us. Finally, Tim has seen the fact that I have tits. Because I swear to God, Scott, we were talking about this earlier on the phone. You have cock blocked me more than any of my girlfriends ever have. <laughs> ever. I have never been in more competition with straight men's attention until I met you. Well, like, I mean, if someone said to me, Heather, who's your biggest competition? I'd be like, Scott. Like, Scott. I mean, to be fair, you. you are the one that created this monster known as the Smoke Show. Honestly, like, I don't know how Herica manages it because, you know, like, I just... You're like you're just like everyone wants to fuck you, and I don't get it. Like they all think you're super sexy, and not that you're not, but like I definitely would probably give a better BJ than you would. I would like to think I've want had more practice. But see, that's what I'm talking about. The beard, and the like, beard sells. Finally, Tim saw the light. Finally, Tim was like, "Heather, you're 40 and you banged and sucked that many cocks. Fuck, you must be good." He realized that practice makes perfect. And I have a lot to bring to the situation. <laughs> now, what it was is he's seen how sad your predictions are. He gave you a pat on the head and goes, there, there. You oh, can my, join someone My better. predictions were very sad. Like, that is actually complete facts <laughs> that you're talking about. And I was so overwhelmed with work. I didn't even submit predictions for AEW. But this is not a wrestling podcast. This is a horror movie podcast. But this is, but she has turned traitor on me, everybody. Oh, for fuck's sake, Scott. Don't worry. I'm never living it down. I told you, Fast and Furious came out, and we're still family, yeah. <laughs> Till you turn your back on family, oh, and no one look. turns your back on family. Paul Walker and Vin Diesel turn their back on each other tons. And now Paul Walker's dead. So hopefully one of us doesn't die in some kind of fucking Good sports Lord, car accident. <laughs> Well, you're making it dark with this hate you're giving. After we had a nice weekend together a couple of weeks ago, and you brought up your lovely girlfriend who, you know, not to say that you, you've hit out of your league. but Oh, I have. Like, you know, like, she's got a good man. You're a good-looking dude. You're funny. You're sweet. Who's the man you're, she's got? You. <laughs> uh, right? I don't know. Maybe. I, I didn't know you guys were into that. Good, hey, next time she comes up here, man, maybe, ain't me. maybe we should go out and go pick up some guys. If that's <laughs> the case, shit. I didn't know you guys were open like that. Um, but I, you're, you're, you're a catch, Scotty. You know that. I always praise you. I think you're wonderful. But she's a bombshell. She truly is. And she's fucking funny, too. Oh, she really is. Funny. Yeah. She's really cool. I'm so glad that I got to meet her. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you guys got to meet finally because, yeah, it was so much fun. It was. We all had a great fun. time. Yeah, and th she liked Niagara Falls, so we went to Niagara Falls, good old rip-off capital of Ontario. But she had a good time. Yeah, you know, first so time nice. seeing the falls, right? Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, because I guess you've been there before, right? I just assumed. But it's true. You've only been there once. So and going back of, again, right? And this time we got to kind of take closer. it all in a lot more because before the last time the last time we did it the first time i came to visit you it was so fucking hot we didn't we got down to the falls stayed for like 10 minutes and we fucking yeah. bounced we didn't even walk the whole way down because yeah it was way too hot this this year the weather was fucking perfect for it it was ideal it was really really nice and um yeah it was a really solid weekend all around we'll talk about some of the special things we did together no not those kind of special things everybody sorry <laughs> oh sorry to disappoint for and for anybody that may uh, may be confused, Heather did post in our Friday Nightmares podcast page that oh, we yeah. got a new team member or a new member of the podcast. And Erica definitely is a part of the podcast in a way. You know, maybe one of these days she can join us. But yeah, but I don't know if because uh, I've seen Rebecca Reinhardt go, oh, shit, or something like that. Just like super excited. So I don't know if she yeah, realized she was commenting that you were beside two hot girls. Oh, another exactly. hot one. No, oh, it's true. Erica's pretty hot. Um, maybe we should say that's me. <laughs> oh, which one are you? Oh, no, that's who I am. But your profile picture? No, 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 that's <laughs> that's not me. 
<laughs> Maybe then I would get some D, Scott. Fuck, between you and Erica. <laughs> Honestly. And you know how many people told me that Erica was really pretty? Mm. Like, a lot. And I was like, fuck, I get it. Fine. So, Scott, <laughs> why are they so good looking? Aww. Wow, look at them. No one <laughs> likes Heather. I'm like the ugly duckling that kind of grew up to be more ugly. <laughs> No, no, no. I have, no. like, one eye blinky in the middle of my forehead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's all right. I don't need that much affirmation. I have Tim Davis. He's all the man I need. He's all Rob, the... Rob. Fuck Rob. Rob. Rob wouldn't even bang me. I know how many times I've come on to Rob and he acts like, he's like, oh, I don't know. I'd rather bang Scott. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I mean, you know, when you're part of the Bull Club old, you swap all sorts of things. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. Especially STDs. Exactly. So, uh, let's you know, speak. Us, Sorry. Us, us, uh, us. Us, uh, ha, what is it? Us height challenged people need to stick together. <laughs> I see. You, you are the, you are the smaller people of society that we need to support. <laughs> um, I have a hat that I got from Darren. I would like to shout out the Psychosymmetrics oh, no, sure. podcast. Yes, I will be donating to an indigenous, um, charity that supports, um, victims. There's no other way to say it. Victims of the residential schools and, and their families that assist here in Canada. Um, it's a toque. So I, I do have pictures of it. I will share it to my page and to his page, but I wanted to announce that. Uh, he insisted on sending me a hat and I said, and I, he didn't seem to want to take any money for it. So I was like, well, I will donate to a charity on your name, Psychosemantic Podcast. And that's a charity I'm quite passionate about right. as I work to educate myself in the wrongdoings of my ancestors and the wrongdoings of today and to try to truly bring uh, reconciliation with equ equity in this country. Sometimes even when I think about, I don't know, when I think about residential schools, especially around Canada today, I just get fucking pissed. Like, I don't know if you feel the same way in the United States anymore when you think about all the shit that's happened and you're like, fuck. Like, I just get sad. Yeah, like, it just makes you like, man, we come from a long list of shitty white people. <laughs> right? And you know I mean? where, where yours is like trying to make amends, ours is just kind of sweeping it on the drug while it still continues. Yeah, well, we have a far way to go, but I will say that we have done a better job of at least acknowledging it. A movie's actually coming out next year about the residential schools. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch it, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hard watch yeah. because uh, shit that happened in those schools are worse than some of the fucking horror movies we've ever watched. So, um, but you know, we were talking about Rob earlier, and I feel like we should move to disappoint him. And the best way to disappoint Rob is to talk about our 2023 watches that he claims are 2022 or shitty movies that we tell him not to watch that he does watch. I just really enjoy disappointing <laughs> Rob as a person. Um, so let's, let's get to it, Scott. All right. Well, you are the first one on this list. I am. Cause you know, I will say I did not like work has been kind of crazy for me. I have not got a chance to watch nearly as many movies as I'd like to. And I've just been really, really busy with a lot of stuff. So this Heather, is hot girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna blame her, but uh, no, we've I've just been a lot busier, and then had a lot of just bad shit going on this week. So it's like, yeah, really had not been in the mood, and I'd been like just not feeling a lot of the films. So I I ended up only watching eight. I brought seven of them to the list, and in the one month. Of them let's let's be clear here. This is a month. May fifth. <laughs> yeah. This is now June second. It's been it's been a slow go. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I watched eight, but I only put a seven on here because the eighth one I watched today, and uh, no, that was bad. Yeah, sometimes you're just, we got to the point now where sometimes we just won't tell you. Yeah. Um, This one here is My House. My uh, House. On, uh, my House. Unlock Carla's darkest secrets. Carla lives life locked inside her house with her kind but tyrant father. I wouldn't really say he's kind, but anyway, okay. When their isolation is interrupted by a mysterious stranger, Carla questions the reason for her family's withdrawal from the outside world and discovers dark secrets that redefine their existence. This is definitely more of a thriller, more than a horror. It was, it was fine. This is a British film. I can, I'm, I'm picturing Matt Wood right now. Matt Wood, but likes nothing of this year, except for Tank. I mean, no, he said tank. it was, he, he thought it was decent and figured he'd recommend it. He, I think he was along the lines of me. I think he needs to go down to the pub and have himself some fucking drinks. That's what I think he needs to do. Matt, you need to start banging more and you need to start <laughs> having some drinks <laughs> and choose joy. But no, man, he's hot. Matt. Him and Kate. Mm, that's another. Oh, bite my fucking fist. Oh, man. <laughs> All this eye candy in the podcasting world. Except for me. I'm the ugly duck 
whistling. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> you are not. Oh, thanks, Scott. I'm just no Erica, Scott Crawford, Kate, or Matt. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, if I'm the best of the trolls, if it's between me and Rob, then that's... <laughs> That's why I want to be with Rob, so we could bump our ugly troll bodies against each other. <laughs> Imagine Good Rob Lord. and I as, as troll dolls with, like, hair sticking. Anyway, okay, back to my house. Oh. So my house, as you can tell, is not a great film. So I, I don't know. I watched this a while ago. I don't fully remember it. It's an 89-minute runtime. It's basically this young lady trying to figure out why does her father keep her locked in the house with no internet, no nothing, like nothing. And then this random dude shows up that tries to get her to find out about her past. It's an odd film. Eh, I wouldn't overly recommend it, but if for some reason you're Matt Wood and you want to watch it and tell me how bad it is, it's available on Apple TV, Google Play, Hoopla, Microsoft Store, YouTube, um, YouTube as well for all rent. I don't necessarily recommend it on any of those. I would say there's some other stuff that's been a little bit better that have come out so far this year. Yeah, I'll say, I remember I started about, I think I got about a half hour into it, and then I think it was, uh, might have been the following weekend after we got back from our trip, but like I know it was like Friday when I started it, never got, went back to it, and there's a reason. feel the need to. There's a reason. Yeah. 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 But this next one, however, was pretty interesting. Um, this one was called, or is called, The Fear Way. There's a good reason it's the road less traveled. A young couple traveling down the freeway seem to be unable to get off the road after being hunted by someone intent on keeping them on the road. So, if you haven't heard, this is a road movie, just because, you know, they use the word road a couple times. But uh, I found this, this one I found on Tubi. And I went to go tell Heather about it and realized she had already watched it. Go figure. She just didn't say anything mm-hmm. to me about it. But uh, <laughs> I I enjoyed myself or enjoyed my time with this one. It wasn't anything like mind blowing, but like I uh, once again, twists this year. I've just been kind of cat. I've been like picking up on right away because I figured out the twist of this one fairly. What? Yeah, like, Get the fuck out of here. About you halfway did? through. Yep. you so smart. And normally I I'm did. Da- yeah, so, I did. So, yeah, normally I am dumb when it comes to twists, but this one, like, or the, just this year for some reason, I'm picking up on them a little more easily. And yeah, this one had one that I thought was pretty interesting, but like I say, I fig- I ended up figuring it out, um, which didn't take away from the film at all. But uh, I found the acting to be pretty good. I found uh, the mystery behind what is going on to be really good, and uh, the whole idea as this film like unfolds of what is happening i found to be very interesting like and what did you think you know what i thought this was pretty decent for low budget i just like to announce that sexy mac would bite fist also uh watched this as well who else watched this he gave it two and a half stars who else watched it tim walker oh tim tim walker what a nice dude he always has his little puppies in his profile photos mm-hmm. anyway i thought for a low budget film this was actually pretty interesting I don't think it was anything that knocked the socks off. Tim Davis, I wouldn't recommend you watching this. I don't think you're going to enjoy it. But I thought it was, you know what it kind of reminded me of? A campfire story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you would be telling this, like, obviously a shorter version of it. But you could tell this as a, you know, 10-minute, 5-minute campfire story. Um, I thought it was interesting. I think if you enjoy movies that have a reflective meaning to them and you like movies that kind of are you know you think it's going to be just about a simple thriller and maybe it gets a little more philosophical then this might be a film for you and if you like low budget films and you yet again you want to get an idea what kind of low budget stuff you would make it is available to rent on apple tv google play uh, plex and tubi you can just watch it for free which i do recommend and youtube you can rent it i think this is a free watch um yeah like I wouldn't I mean, necessarily rent it. Yeah, I was going to say, if it's available on Tubi, watch it there. Like, don't waste, don't, like, spend money. Or like, Plex. I mean, yeah. And, but, Plex you know, too. at the same time, like, uh, if this wasn't on a free service, I'd say this was a good two ninety nine rental. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would go that high, personally. I don't know if I would even rent it at all. But, but, that being said, I don't think it's a horrible film. I think for a free watch on Tubi, it's good times. So, I started watching this one, and I thought it was silly and funny. Um... Spoiler, Scott did not feel the same. Um, it is called The Third Saturday in October, Part 5. <laughs> and um, he's back again, just like the other times. It's Part 5, Unstoppable Killer. 
Jeremiah uh, Jack Harding is back in town after seven years as he stalks and kills at random before chancing upon a football watching party. <laughs> the game is, of course, between the longstanding rivals, the Alabama Mobile Seahawks, <laughs> and it's the AMN Commonwealth Chaos <laughs> ensures an increasingly ridiculous fashion with invented murder and multiple love triangles. Hearts are broken and appendages are torn. This is the epitome of low budget, silly fucking making fun of every slasher that you can think of. I can't even think of who I would recommend this. The only person who I would recommend this to is Sander Kane, who's watched it. Um, yep. So yeah, that's it. Um, Chris Jericho, who is also a fellow Canadian, um, he gave it two and a half stars. I think that's a pretty fair rating. <laughs> two two Wait, and a half stars. The Chris Jericho? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, it's Chris Jericho, and he's from, and he's from BC. I know. So I was going to say, Andy's a horror movie fanatic, too. So He is, right? Um, but I wouldn't say this is anything to write home about. I wouldn't really recommend anyone go out and watch it, unless you want to see something very low budget and very silly. Um, it is available to rent on all the usual suspects. But, Scotty, I know you weren't a fan. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, for this one, I think uh, I think it was just a little too on the nose with its silliness. Like, when I because I like when I seen Third Saturday in October, Part 5, and there was no other parts before it. This, this, this was the first movie ever made for this, but it was automatically jumping to a Part 5. I'm like, oh, boy. All right, let's see. And yeah, like I got to applaud, like the low budget filming was good. The, uh, you know, everything they did for the, with their budget was good, but like, I think just the dialogue and everything else around it just was too much on the nose for me. Fair enough. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to argue with you. It's, it is what it is, right? This is yeah. an 89 minute runtime. I'll give them credit for sticking under, they didn't make this two hours. <clears throat> Skin them a rink. Yeah. So, you I know. Guess. It's available on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, YouTube, Microsoft Store. If for some reason you feel so inclined that you want to go rent this one, um, it's it's not really a, a go-ahead for Scotty and I. I can get to the next one. I don't think you've seen... Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, no, we've definitely seen this one. Oh, yeah, sorry. You switched the... Okay. You want to lead this in because it's kind of your baby. Yeah, so this one, I know it's kind of a old hat at this point because, you know, May 5th was like i think i watched this like the weekend after or something like that but this is evil dead rise and the synopsis says three siblings find an ancient vinyl that gives birth to bloodthirsty demons that run amok in a los angeles apartment building and thrust them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable uh yep so this is like a new sequel telling of the evil dead series and everyone on here knows my love for evil dead i fucking love this franchise i love the mean spiritedness i love the comedic ones i love them all and this one definitely follows the route of part one and the evil dead 2013 remake where it's just very mean spirited Holy fuck, did I love this movie. I loved everything about this. I thought the acting was great. I thought the characters were actually making pretty good decisions for, like, situations they were in. Um, I found the claustrophobic setting, like, of being in a like a rundown apartment that is basically hardly any tenants left because it's closing down. I uh, thought that was like a very good setting. I love a lot. They had a lot of awesome callbacks and homages to the other Evil Dead movies in the series. And they did something that the 2013 Evil Dead did not do. And that was they made these deadites mean-spirited while also making them darkly, uh, what would be the word? Dark and demented, where they actually like are talking and basically fucking with their victims, which is, you know, what the Deadites do. They're just mean-spirited and love to torment and tease and torture in any way they can by just, like, the way they are. But uh, and Basically what Dead... I do to Scott on every episode. Exactly. <laughs> but, man, this is a bloodbath, too. Like, there's so much gore in this. There's some really cool camera shots. Um, yeah, I cannot say enough good things about this. I fucking love it. It is fighting for my number one if it is not my number one. 50 cups? It's doing 50 cups? 50, 50 cups? What is it? It's like, put up your Not saying it right. 50 right? cups. Thank you. I'm like, tap, tap, Like, I can't speak today. Um, yeah, man, I love this movie. I thought it was fucking great. 
I'm not the biggest Evil Dead fan. I think it's fine. I think the series is fine. It's just not my go-to like it is for you. But I thought this was fucking awesome. You know, for a 96-minute runtime, this thing fucking moved. It was great. And, like, Tim Davis said it best, or Daniel said it best. There's people in here that didn't make it that you were kind of sad about. Like, it's been a while since I've watched the movie, and I'm like, oh, man, that's too bad. Yeah, like, I did not expect Even some throwaway characters that were killed, I was like... Huh, that's too bad. Yeah. Right? Um, and besides the wraparound, which I felt was completely unnecessary. Um, yeah, it really was. They really didn't need that. But They did. But otherwise, fucking awesome movie. This is worth, I don't know, if you like gore, you like fucking de- deadites, you like, I don't know, people getting fucked up, you like people who you want to survive that don't survive, you'll like this movie. It's available on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube for rent, and it's worth whatever fucking money you yeah, want to. I believe it is also, I think, streaming on HBO Max as well now. Oh, Matt, what only gave it three and a half stars? What was wrong with it, Matt? What was Matt, wrong, Matt? Matt is just a very harsh critic. He's Matt, always had. Matt, was it not in Britain? Is that why you didn't like it? Is that why? <laughs> was it not at a club that you were DJing at, so you didn't like it as much? Matt, Matt, you didn't even come see me when I was in London, Matt. You remember? Kate did. Not you, Matt. Not you. Shots Matt. fired. You hearing this, Matt? You know why? Matt was knew that I would probably be inappropriate, and he was right. He was like, <laughs> I'm married, Heather. I'm like, that don't matter. Rings don't matter in London. I'm just kidding. I didn't say that to Matt. His wife's a babe. I definitely know I can't compete with her. She's a hottie, just like him. One big hottie group. Anyway, Matt doesn't like it, but everyone else does. So if everyone else is opinion... <laughs> As he gives it Davis a 7 out of 10. likes it. You know, Sandra Kane likes it. These are all really good podcasters. Even Brandon Young likes it. So you know what? We're talking about the cream of the crop here, the people that like this film. So go out and check it out. It's definitely worth your, your time. Now, did you see this one yet with Mr. Crow? I have not. All right. The Pope's Exorcist. Father Gabriel Amorth, chief exorcist of the Vatican. Man, does it not feel like there's a lot of demon films right now this year? Demon and pregnancy films? Yep. Get that yeah. Get that vibe? Okay. Well, yeah, a lot um, of that. Yeah, right? Investigates a young boy's terrifying possession and ends up uncovering century-old conspiracies that the Vatican has desperately tried to keep hidden. I'll be honest, the demon in this one is fucking jokes. <laughs> You know, like, how the cleansing hour demon was funny? It had mm-hmm. funny lines? This one has some funny lines, too. And sometimes I really enjoy when they have, like, the demons and the demons say, like, the most ridiculous burns. <laughs> Fuck, they're funny. Anyway. Um, this is your paint-by-numbers exorcist movie. It's not a bad movie. I think um, Russell Crowe does a great job in playing this real-life father who did exist, who did write books based on his exorcism, and this is one of his books. And it kind of talked about, and I was actually listening to this on a podcast today, In the first scene, it shows that they actually, before they will perform an exorcism, they have to see that medical intervention has been done first. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the Catholic Church just doesn't walk in and start doing exorcism. There has to be a medical assessment done, psychological, physical, to make sure it's not a mental illness. And in, you know, this isn't too big of a spoiler, but in a previous exorcism, he kind of comes together that it was a, it was a fake, right? that the person was faking it. So I kind of thought that was interesting. It doesn't just go into this blind belief that it is always the demon. There's actually a concept that it could be not that, which I did enjoy quite a bit. Um, this is for available for rent. I think if you're a Russell Crowe fan, you like exorcism films, like I think Tim Davis said it best. Everyone always holds everything up to the exorcist. And if it's not as good as the exorcist, it's not this. I don't know. I really fucking enjoyed Cleansing Hour that came out a couple of years ago on Shudder. I rewatched it recently and I still find that one a good time movie to watch. I, I enjoy the exorcism Emily Rose. I thought that was a fucking excellent film. I don't know. I, the Conjuring is technically an exorcism film. I enjoy that too. I still need to see uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. It's a good one. I saw it years ago, year, years ago now. So I think if you like that, then I think this movie's worth it for you. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Apple TV, Google Play, here in Canada on Cineplex. And I would say any rental cost, if that's what you like. Let's see here. Tim Davis gave it three and a half stars. Angry Matt Wood hasn't watched it yet. So Matt, (laughs) watch it. So we can watch you give it one star because for some reason, I don't know, you didn't like him. Um, But yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Matt likes movies. I'm just teasing. 
He's just a tougher critic. Yeah, and he probably has better taste. <laughs> Questionable I'm sometimes. Like, I'm not like, ain't that movie? I never would think that happened. So I liked it. But then again, like, I'm literally such a simpleton. I can be like, I had an iced coffee today. Today was a good day. You know, I had that iced coffee and it tasted really yummy. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, I'll be I like, know I went for a hike with my dog today. It was a good day. Like, it doesn't take much to make me happy. I'm happy 90, 95% of the time. You know, I'm a pretty easy to please person. Like, I'm going to have some ciders later and eat some pizza. You know what? I'm really fucking excited for that and sit in my backyard. Fuck yeah. And I'm, and I'm happy with that as a Friday night. That makes me happy in my little Heather's soul. So maybe I'm just a simpleton and these movies are simple for me and I like that. You know, <laughs> look at the demon and the demon's mad and then they make the demon go bye bye. And maybe that's just good for me. And maybe that's just good for me. And Matt Wood is all like, Heather, please, let me go back to May 24 films and I have seen Midnight. <laughs> I need to watch wow. Midsommar again. I don't know. Maybe he likes, does Matt even like Midsommar? We're talking a lot about Matt. I was Tim just going to say, this is what happens, Matt, when you challenge Heather and agree with me that she's gaslit for 2023s because, man, she is coming at you this time. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. And don't forget, I come back to England often, Matt. It's not that big of a Oh, God, country. here we go. Okay. I won't talk about it. No, keep <laughs> your headphones kidding. on. All right. <laughs> so let's go to the next movie. I've given the recommendation. I think mean, if you like exorcism films, rent that bad boy. Um, did you watch this one yet or is it still me? Just you. Uh, you All didn't right. sound too impressed with it. Uh, well, you keep stuff in your face of food, and I'll uh, I'll talk about this because we're both eating when the other one's talking. That's great. Um, great. Professionals. I don't know how to say this. Her, who, her, who, who's Sarah? Uh, who's Sarah? I, I think who's Sarah? Good. Who's Sarah the Bone Woman? Valerie's joy at first at becoming a first-time mother is quickly taken away when she's cursed by a sinister entity. As danger closes in, she's forced deeper into a chilling world of dark magic that threatens to consume her. Ah, uh, pregnancy horror sure is a thing this year. Um. I think if this came out on another year, it may have a different impact on me. I think the acting is great. I think the movie does a great job of setting up a creepy atmosphere, but I think I'm tired of the subgenre. And I don't think that's the movie's fault. I yeah. just think it, ha like, I'll be honest, out of all the pregnancy horrors, this one's probably has the creepiest scenes. All right. Um, it's the best magic kind of stuff that's out there. So it is available on the Shutty, so if you do have the Shutter, I do recommend watching it there. Oh, Matt would like this one. He gave it three and a half stars. Sander gave it four. Tim gave it two. Oh, we don't know what Dave C gave it. Mm, that'd be interesting. There's a little, there's a little question mark right there. Dave C from the Exploding Heads movie podcast. So if you have the Shutter and like me and Scott, you try to watch all of the 2023 drops on Shutter, check it out. If that's not a thing for you or you're burned out on pregnancy horror, I would say skip this one. Overall, not a bad film. I think it was a me problem, not the film problem. This is available if you want to rent it on Apple TV, Google Play, AMC, Amazon, AMC Plus. It is available if you are subscriptions to those. But honestly, if you got the shuddy and you enjoy international horror, I believe this is Spanish. Um, yeah, check it out. It's well done. But pregnancy horror is a little overdone right now. It's yeah. a little tiresome. Yeah. Just just a tiny bit. Right? Is it still me? No, nope, oh. this one will be me. Uh, oh, okay. You and I both watch this. Oh, yes, we did. Oh, yes, we did. All right. So, yeah, the next one is Pillow Party Massacre. After a bullying incident leads to tragedy, four former high school friends reconnect at a vacation home where a maniacal killer stalks the night. Well, this was the very first movie I watched after the last time we recorded. So, a month ago, and I'm going to be honest, I don't remember anything from it, but I do remember enjoying it. It is definitely a throwback-style, low-budget slasher. I ended up giving it three and a half stars, but like I am, at this moment, I am struggling to remember anything that happens in this movie. I remember what happened. Basically... Um, these four friends are involved in a prank that goes wrong. Their friend is supposed to fuck her boyfriend at prom and they take pictures of her naked and show them everywhere, which is sexual harassment. Anyway, 
Um, and she kills herself, kills her boyfriend, and then ends up in a uh, mental institution or a clinical, you know, psychological ward or whatever they refer to it as in, That's in the right. movie. Um, and these young ladies get back together again, and they are stalked. It is not a surprise of who the stalker is. If you've watched a horror movie before in your life, you could probably put it together very early on with some hints that are dropped of who it is. But for a low budget, campy little slasher, it was fun. Uh, Tim Davis, do I think you'll like this? Tim, this will not be on your top 10. But if you're interested in watching some campy, silly little slasher, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I don't I'd know. Say, Maybe you'll be annoyed by the characters. I have no idea. Yeah, like I'd say, I think Tim Davis would be fairly entertained by it. Like I don't yeah, think he'd like, be blown special. away, but he like it's a slasher film that is definitely taking like it like takes its cues from like the old school slashers, and which we don't see nearly as much nowadays. So like yeah, and I th- I think he would find enjoyment out of it. I don't think it'll be just anything mind blowing. I think if you walk into this film knowing that it's a cheap, silly little slasher, I think you'll be okay. Like, keep your expectations low, and you know, you'll have some fun with it. It's available yeah. on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu. Oh, and it's an 87-minute runtime. Um, Microsoft Store, I don't know. If you like silly little cheap slashers, rent it. If not, skip it. I don't know. To me, that's the easiest solution here. Like, if this doesn't sound like it would be something for you... Don't go on our page later and tell me how horrible it was. Or on your <laughs> podcast, tell me how over horrible it was. Or message me privately and tell me how horrible it was. <laughs> I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying if you like cheap slashers, like you're cheap. Rob, Rob, Humphreys. Rob Humphrey, don't watch this movie. Oh, fuck, he's going to watch this movie. <laughs> well, he would like it. He has it has young ladies around the age that he seems to be interested oh, in. Oh, good lord. Anyway, um... <laughs> Uh, what's the next one? I have not watched. Oh, okay. Well, you better go ahead and eat your salad while I, uh, I carry this fucking podcast on my back. All right. I'll be watching. Like, I'm watching Scott eat his salad is the next name of this horror movie. Her worst nightmare is in her house. Mourning the loss of her murdered sister. Oh, by the way, this is an uncorked classic, everybody. Yeah, they're back in town. Julie is left alone in a new isolated home when her tech genius husband goes on a business trip. She becomes trapped inside and must fight her fears to stay alive. Um, this movie is like a, what is it, the one that we say, like a soap opera type, a lifetime type film. Um, I do enjoy the smart house thing. I do enjoy how she tells off her husband at one point. Uh, but this is definitely more of a thriller than it is a horror. Um, the ending is, I don't know, we have we could have seen this coming a million miles away. There was another movie about a smart house that was done last year, I believe. It was done much better than this. Watch that movie. Um, this is, for some reason, if you really like thrillers, I don't know, Lance Lanford, your wife might like this. So maybe watch it with her to make her happy. I'll be watching. It's a 90-minute runtime. It's available on Apple, Google Play, Vudu, YouTube, Microsoft Store. Only rent this if you have someone in your life that really likes, like, lifetime kind of thrillers. On to the next. On to the next is Possessed. Ah, yes. Netflix, international horror done right. They're getting back in the game. A teacher must put aside his personal traumas to rally his school in a fight for survival against a group of violent, possessed students. I'm not sure Ooh. which country this song, this movie was based off of. I think it's Malaysia. That's what it is. It's a Malaysian film. Let me make something very clear here. There's not tons of Malaysian horror out there. There's a lot of Thai horror. There's a lot of Japanese horror. But we don't always see lots of Malaysian horror. This was definitely one of their, like, you know, I wouldn't say it was, like, the best horror film in the entire world. But I found it entertaining enough. At an at a 95-minute runtime, it did not overstay its welcome. Um, people who you wanted to survive didn't. And it was actually pretty quick moving. I think for a Netflix watch, it was entertaining enough. I enjoyed it personally enough. Um, I think uh, Sander gave it two stars. Why, Sander? Hmm. Why are you so mean? It's not bad. 
Trust me, Ends Men was worse. You probably heard me talk about it on the last episode. At least this had dialogue <laughs> and a clear plot line that mm. people could follow. So That's it's fired, Xander. Right? Yeah, Xander. I'm so smart. Look at me. I'm Xander. I got skin No, I'm just kidding. I was Xander didn't <laughs> like skin marine. Anyway, um,. I don't know. I think this is fine for Netflix. I had a good time with it. If you want to throw something on that's a little gory, you know, you want to watch something that's international. It's a, it's not a story that you're going to be like, oh man, what a shock. But I thought it was cool. I thought the thing that stopped the possessed was cool. The little cheesy story that's tied into it is cheesy, but man, I had a good time. 95 that's minutes. Like this, pay for Netflix. It's worth it. This uh, Sounds like an interesting one, though. And uh, I would watch it, Scott. I think you would find it interesting enough. You and yeah. Erica should watch it one night. What I was going to say, like, I have a uh, list of Netflix films that I saved recently that I want to check out for 2023. Like, uh, And they all seem to be foreign horror. And Yeah, always. They, always. They're definitely coming back, but, like, we'll see how long I have Netflix back for with the whole charging extra for sharing passwords and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm on someone's plan, and I just sent them money so we could have a second account. So I did yes. that because I, I use it enough. Like, I use it enough. I wouldn't say it's great, but I use it for a lot more documentaries and stuff like that. Yeah, because I am on my uh, ex-wife's account, and so we'll see. I'm, I'm not throwing her any money, so no. we'll, we'll we'll see if uh, if she continues paying. If not, eh, we'll see. Yeah, I, I use also, I watch on Netflix to give listeners an options, right? Like, if someone has Netflix and maybe that's a subscription service that they have, I like to give people options. You know, it's right. not, you have to run out and see this movie for your top 10. But if you're looking for something that's relatively entertaining, I, I had a good enough time with this. So it's available on Netflix in Canada and the United States. And I would say if you have Netflix, check it out. Or if you're stealing someone's Netflix, check it out. All right. And I will, we will both watch this one and Erica watch this with me. Let me get it up real quick. All right. This is a Shutter exclusive uh, called Influencer, or I believe the other language is the influencer or something like that. Um, be careful who you follow. While struggling on a solo backpack backpacking trip in Thailand, social media influencer Madison meets CW, who travels with ease and shows her a more uninhibited way of living. But CW's interest in her takes a darker turn. Uh, so yeah, you recommended I check this one out, and yeah, so Eric and I watched this uh, this previous Sunday, and yeah, I thought this was uh, pretty entertaining. Um, I thought the twists and turns that went on throughout this, like wondering what was going to happen, was really well done. I thought the acting was really well done. Yeah. Especially from the woman that played CW. She just... uh Canadian, by the way. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Up and coming yeah. Canadian actress, so... Yeah, like this one isn't a blow my mind type movie or anything like that. It won't be in my top 10, but I still enjoyed this one. And it'll definitely be one of the ones I'll think about for like the social media award mm -hmm. that we do. Yeah, like I thought this was a good reflection of the influence culture without being it over the top and annoying. Yes. Um, I thought it was a great mystery. And I would agree that CW is probably the best part of this. I thought she was great. Um, Matt, Matt Wood gave it four stars, by the way. Looks like we've, uh, we've rekindled our friendship, Matt and I, just now. <laughs> Sander gave it three and a half, so that's cool. We're, we're still friends now, too. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it was entertaining. Like, I, I wasn't watching this, like, oh, man, what's, what's it gonna be? Oh, dear. Right. Uh, you know, but I thought, what I really appreciated about this is that some throwaway lines made sense at the end. Yes. You know what I mean? They set up some things where I'm like, see, that makes sense. Good job, movie, for throwing something in earlier that comes back around in the third act. And you're like, that makes sense. Exactly. Um, and I didn't find the boyfriend in this too bad. He was kind of a douchebag at the beginning. But as time goes on, you're kind of like, you know, there's some interesting characters. Interesting yeah. characters. And beautiful scenery, too. Like, this definitely oh, was... had some money put into it. You know, and it was well done. And, and at a 92-minute runtime, again, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah. You're in and out, right? Um, so good job, Shutter. This is available on all the Shutties. This is available on AMC+, Plus, um, as well as DirecTV in the United States. Yep, I definitely recommend watching it. I think it was worth, definitely worth a watch, especially if you have Shutter. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Where are we now? Is it me? Motion? Oh, yeah. Yep, that yeah. one is yours, and then the next one. Oh, is man. Plus. I shouldn't have included this. I don't know why I included <laughs> this. This is not a great movie. 
Um, in hopes to try to watch Variety, I watched this film. So motion detected. The system is armed. When a recent victim of a terrifying home invasion moves to what she thinks is a safer house, the smart home security begins to take over her life. I I felt like this is very much like he'll be watching or I'll be watching. Very, very similar. Um, oh, here, let's read Matt, Matt Wood's review. All right. This is by Matt Wood from the <laughs> Not So Spotless Mind podcast. What is it? The Spotless Internal Mind? Er, eternal Darkness of the Not So Spotless Mind. From Matt Wood. I think people are a bit unfair with this film. Okay, it's not great, but I've seen far worse this year from Horror Selection from Heather Powell. He didn't say that. I'm just kidding. I added, <laughs> Heather that Powell. I added the Heather Powell part in. The acting wasn't that bad. Natasha did a decent job as the main character, and she's quite easy on the eyes. Creeper much? Um, the stories <laughs> are okay. Could have done with more to it. Budget low, but I can cope with that. All around, it's okay. Not particularly horror or scary. More of a thriller, but it had my investment to find out what happened. Five fucked up security systems out of ten. That is funny. Um, I think that's a fair rating from that. Um, I personally agree. This is very much like home security system go bad. And yes, I would definitely say both main characters were attractive. The gentleman and the lady. Um, you know, if we're going by that for entertainment value, for sure. Uh, it was... I don't know. This movie was okay. Like, it's, it's again another... Honestly, we could have another subcategory home Google systems gone bad because there seems to be a lot of those now too. Um, way of the world. Right. If you, from our glowing recommendation from Matt Wood, I agree. Probably people are too hard on it. I don't think, I don't think most people are too hard on movies. I think people shit on stuff sometimes and they just do it to look cool. But I would definitely not be spending a lot of money on this one. That being said, unless you really are into home security horror. Uh, it is available on Apple, Google Play, Voodoo, Hoopla, YouTube, and also, can you plug Matt and Kate's podcast again? I always fuck up the name of it. The Eternal Darkness of the Not-So-Spotless Mind podcast. Two great podcasters, as much as I'm bringing Matt's name up, like Candyman. I almost feel like he's going to show up and we're going to go down to the pub and have some drinks. And the whole time, I just keep biting my fist like, Arr, Matt. Oh my, so handsome. Then Kate shows up and I'll be biting both fists. I don't know how I'm going to put both in my mouth, but that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, 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 it is it's it's what it is, right? It's nothing that I was just running out. Please, for the love of God, Tim, Tim Davis, do not watch this movie. You're not going to like it. You're going to find it boring as fuck, so please don't watch it. Which other words means Rob Humphrey, watch it. <laughs> no, Rob's going to watch it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, you got this. Yeah, yeah, so we'll jump onto this one. Uh, So this one is a Tubi original, and I watched the trailer, and I was like, okay, this actually looks uh, much better produced than most Tubi originals, and that is Mercy Falls. How far would you fall to survive? A group of friends set off into the Scottish Highlands in search of a long-lost cabin. Once far from civilization, an unforeseen tragedy befalls the group, and one bad decision leads to suspicion, betrayal, and murder. <laughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, so I watched the trailer to this, and I was like, ooh, this looks pretty good. And uh, so on To Be Tuesday with Erica, we decided to give this a watch. And we both enjoyed it. I, I had a lot of fun with this. Um, definitely a good survival horror film. Definitely some dumb decisions being made, like with like who they have tag along with them throughout this, with them not knowing much about the person. But I found like I found it to go quickly. I think it was a uh, uh, okay. So it was a hundred and three minute runtime, but it ended up having a good pacing to it that I did not feel that runtime. And I thought the acting was all well done. Um, had some very tense moments, but I uh, I would say like yep. The only downside was some of these decisions were really dumb. And yes, you need bad decisions in horror films, but sometimes this one I'm just sitting here going, really guys, really. But yeah. I but just put him in the situation. And make and movie shit, go right. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was okay. And you know what? I kind of wondered about the antagonists. Were they an antagonist truly? Or did they become an antagonist because of other people's actions? Right. You know, that was the thing that I really wondered about. Because there's a thing that they do that I'm like, I could see that making sense. You know, yeah. if you were in a situation where 
you had to make some hard decisions, maybe, and you were trained to make hard decisions. Um, it was interesting. I'm glad you recommended it because I thought that it was really, really... I like these survival films. Same. Um, and I thought that it was entertaining enough. And for a free watch on Tubi, you can't really go wrong. Right. And once again, beautiful scenery with the Scottish Highlands. Right. Yeah, beautiful. And like... I don't know, Matt, watch this. It's on Tubi. Maybe you get that in, in Britain. I don't know. Is there Tubi in Britain? I'm not sure. I, can't, I tried to look it up when I was there last, and I wasn't able to locate it, but maybe it's something else in Britain. Um, Matt, let us know if you're not yeah. mad at me, if we're still friends. <laughs> we should be, because I've said how awesome you are, and same with Kate. True. Like, many a times. Scott does, doesn't she, say that. She she throws jabs at you, but at the same time, she, th- she sprinkles a little love in there, too. Trust <laughs> I know. Me, and, I know how it is. Yeah. You know how it is. I'm abusive. Um, Tin and Tina, you didn't watch this, did you? No. So another Netflix one. Another Netflix International. This one's a long one. We're looking at 119 minutes. It's a much longer film. Yeah. So after a traumatic miscarriage, Lola and her husband, Alfredo, adopt adopt Tin and Tina, a lovable Ibono, Albino, 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 thank you, fuck me, Uh, sister with an ultra-Catholic so brother and sister with an ultra Catholic education that makes them interpret the Holy Bible verbatim. Oh, do they ever? Um, I read a little bit of a spoiler online that this is supposed to be a kind of a discussion on religion and the dangers of taking religion very, very um, by literally. Um, I do believe this is a Spanish film as well, and the Catholic face is very strong in the Spanish culture. So I don't know if this was maybe a play on the culture and society. It is taking place, I think, in the 1980s, um, where it's supposed to be filmed. It's an interesting movie. It's not super high on the horror. Um, Parts of it are horrific. It's an interesting one. I don't know where people will stand on this. It is a long one. I was entertained enough by it. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you would like it or not. I think that um, you maybe should check it out if you got time by the end of this year. I wouldn't mind hearing your thoughts on it. And it's available for free on Netflix, Canada, and the U- Canada and the United States. Yeah, I'll say I, I added this one to my list, so I will definitely check it out. But yeah, it looks like Netflix definitely has quite a few on there recently that are some pretty hefty run times. Yeah, like I feel like um, Netflix is really... Like, they are getting some quality films. This is a quality film. Don't get me wrong. It's a well-made film. Right. I just don't know if it's, like, oh, man, like, gotta watch this year. You know, I would say it's interesting, especially if it's doing, like, a religious commentary. I think it it, it hits the mark. But would I say to you, oh, my God, top 10 material, top 20 material? Probably not. But if you have Netflix and, you know, you enjoy Spanish horror, this might be for you. Nice. Well, I will definitely give it a watch at some point and let you know my thoughts. Um, now, you've seen this next one, because I think you told me about it. Yes. Yeah, yes. so this one, uh, Erica and I ended up watching this one on Saturday, and it is Malum, uh, with a 92-minute runtime. So, uh, tagline is, Feed the Demon. Uh, synopsis is, a rookie police officer willingly takes the last shift at a newly decommissioned police station in an attempt to uncover the mysterious connection between her father's death and a vicious cult. Now, I think this is supposed to be like a straight up remake of last shift from back in like early like not early but like 2015 2016 um and i i liked that movie i thought it was good but uh watching this one man they i loved this this was very disturbing it was very dark like it was a cult that kind of had like almost a charles manson style vibe to it but involving a demon instead and uh, some very horrific things happen in this film. It's very gory, very violent. Kind of gives me Evil Dead Rise vibes with the gore and violence. It's very intense. Um, and I thought the acting was all really well done. I thought the story, being in a de- decommissioned uh, police station, felt very creepy and unsettling, especially in the town and what was going on outside of the town. And I found everything about this to be very unnerving and unsettling. Like, this one really spoke my language like has that dark twisted uh gore to it has the cult aspect to it which i do love um but yeah like it's this is one to definitely watch 
Like I this is in this is in my top ten, if not my top five. Really? I loved it that much. I'm gonna have to get you to explain the ending to me at some point then. Okay. Because the ending confused the fuck out of me. Um I never saw The Last Shift though, which I believe this is a adaptation of. Yeah, it's like a remake adaptation. Like I like I just found it kind of weird that they remade it only a couple years later cuz yeah, I'll look while you discuss your thoughts on It's 2014. Up. I looked yeah, it up. Yeah, so yeah, it wasn't even that long ago. Well, I guess 9 years ago now but still like not long enough for a remake, which is Yeah, lots of surprising. places, lots of movies do that though. Like Cabin wasn't Cabin Fever made. Yeah, that one was that also another weird one where it was like, "Why are you doing that?" Um, I definitely enjoyed this. I thought the gore was great. The suspense was great. I just found the ending confusing. That was the only thing that lost it for me. Um, but I think in terms of a movie, fucking solid for all the reasons you listed. Well acted, entertaining, great gore. Probably what more people are looking for from movies this year. Um, a lot of people have seemed to like it. Um, I think Tim and Matt Wood should watch this. We brought them up a yes. lot today. I feel like they might enjoy it. It is available on Google, Voodoo, YouTube, Amazon Video. And I think if you like gore and, I don't know, some intensity and kind of like an Evil Dead theme, you'll like this movie. I think that's the best description you can give. Yeah, because this is very dark and twisted. Like, and very dark and twisted. Very dark and twisted. Definitely a high recommend for me. Right. So, yeah. And it's a, what's the runtime? 92 minute runtime. And it does go pretty quick. So... The last thing I'm going to talk about briefly is just uh, a YouTube documentary, or sorry, a Tubi documentary that was recently dropped, uh, Scariest Places in America. Countdown, 13 locations ranging from haunted houses to abandoned asylums and a few of frightening places in between. This is really, really good. I think one of the reviews here said it best. This is basically a travel, a travel channel documentary produced by Tubi TV, and I really enjoyed it. 100%. I think it brings up a whole bunch of different locations across the U.S., some that you would know of, some that you don't. And it's a really quick hour and a half. So if you like docs, I would say this is a documentary that could be competing for me for best documentary of the year. I oh, really, shit. really like that. And I really hope it doesn't get kind of pushed aside because it's on Tubi. You got to like docs. You got to like documentaries. It's only, as I said, an hour and a half. And I really enjoyed it. This is one that I would recommend anybody watching. Yep, this one I added to my list when I seen it popped up because I think it's also a nice. Tubi original too. It is a Tubi original as well. So not technically a horror film, but about obviously scary things and yeah. actual scary and, places. And we also have our awards for documentaries and stuff like that too. So Right, right, which is nice. It's nice to have that because then it allows us to watch documentaries. You know what I mean? Exactly. Instead of us being like snobby, snobby bitches that are like documentaries don't count, documentaries don't count. Right? Exactly. Like they may not yeah. count in our top ten, but they will be. Uh, we make sure. To oh, make sure. you know we could. Yeah. Like if there was one that blew me away that much over a like horror, just an actual horror film, then yeah. Right. Um. What other docs have come out this year? There's been uh, this one. Search of Darkness 3. Um, the Hitchhike Guy, uh, whatever it was from Netflix. The Hitchhiker documentary that we both watched. The Hitchhiker documentary. Shutter hasn't done much, have they? Yeah, in, in Search oh, of Darkness Oh, Search 3. of Darkness, but just that. Yeah. Because then the year before was the year before the one with the about um, Nightmare on Elm Street 2? No, that was Was that a couple of years ago? Okay. Yeah, I'm losing track sometimes of the documentaries, but yeah. Uh, I hope Tubi does more like this. I actually really liked it. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, I, um, I see they have another one. I'll I'll let you know what it is. But uh. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't watched it yet, but I've seen they had another documentary out there. Oh, nice. Well, I look forward to hearing your recommendation because I am enjoying what Tubi is putting down. To be honest with you, I find it good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think it's called Something Walks in the Woods. Oh. Is it about Rob? Might be. Yeah, Rob walks in the woods. He's our little Bigfoot running around. Damn. All right. So I guess I'll jump right into older watches. I just watched this one actually recently from Shudder. Have you seen Primal Rage? I have not. At least not the one from this year. I've seen one from like 2019 or 2018. Oh, that one, right? Um, I think it's a similar story, but I'm not quite sure. There's a new party animal on campus and she'll bring out the beast in you. A scientist at a Florida university inventively creates a raised virus while performing experiments intended to restore dead brain tissues in baboons. Sound like any movie we've heard of before? few of them, yeah. All right, down a little bit like 20 days later? Yep. All right. 
Um, when a journalist for the college paper breaks into the campus, he's bitten by one of the infected baboons, and the virus soon spreads to a trio of rapists and a valley girl. Yeah, there's a really ridiculous rape scene that's in this, and some pretty like stupid fucking language. But anyway, um, it's it's a typical 1980s kind of animal rights activist kind of film. Um, it's on Amazon, Amazon Plus, Flick Fling, Shudder, and Shudder. Uh, I would say if you like 80s films and you enjoy these kind of animal cruelty and the animals fight back and fuck up humans and we get fucked up from the animals, then I think you'll dig this film. I think it's worth a watch. Um, there is some very like 80isms in this with the way they talk and the way they treat women and all that other shit. But but that being said, I did find it quite uh, quite entertaining, and it is available on the Shutter if you have Shutter. So yeah, nice. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out because yeah, that's definitely not like the uh, one from 2019 or 2018. That one was about a Bigfoot. Oh, was that one like where they like it's a couple I think or something like that? Yeah, I think so. But it was like Bigfoot, but it like was Bigfoot like if Bigfoot was Predator. Oh, and like, then he fucked like, them all up. Yeah, like he has like he uses tools and shit like that and weapons. Um, but I will talk about the older watch I just seen, and that is a low budget found footage film from 2019, but I believe it was like widely released in 2021, 2020. I think I believe 2022, because our good friend Brandon Orlick, previously or formerly from the Exploding Heads horror movie podcast, really loved this one, and it was called and it is called Death of a Vlogger. He wanted followers, something followed. An ambitious vlogger experiences the dark side of the internet when his latest video, which features an alleged haunting, goes viral. Um, so yeah, this was definitely like a very low-budget, independent, uh, mockumentary-style horror film. And once again, I found you know the acting to be pretty good for its budget. Uh, I found the story to be really intriguing and had some very creepy moments to it. Uh, but, you know, a couple years old now, like, so I can say it, but, like, they fake a ghost haunting, and this guy does, and that shows the repercussions of what happens when you are a social media popular person that mm -hmm. gets found out that he fakes something. He gets shamed. He gets basically, like, loses everything and has to do apology videos and, like, try, but, you know, but there is something truly happening. Like, later on, you find out there is. But at the time, like, yeah, what he faked basically caused his downfall in popularity and had no one to turn to and just was struggling with, like, depression and all that because they talk about how, on so like, with social media people... <clears throat> They get an endorphin rush from notifications and comments and likes and how that endorphin rush is like an addiction where even if it is nasty comments saying you should die and threatening comments and blah, 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 you're still getting that endorphin rush from getting the notification and you can't help yourself but go and read them where like an addiction, you get that rush, but it's also harmful to you. That's what this is. And... I found that kind of an interesting take and look into that, like, lifestyle. I thought I watched this one. I don't think I have because I was looking it up, and I don't think I saw this one. Yep, it is now on Tubi, so I, I definitely recommend checking it out. Like, I, yeah. can see, I see why Brandon loved it because, you know, Brandon loves his hidden gems, and this is definitely a hidden gem. And I thought it was a really – because I, I was in the mood for a found footage film and found yeah. this one, and I thought it was – really good and had me intrigued yeah i wonder if he's done anything else so it was by graham hughes um and yeah he's done some bbc worldwide stuff national geographic channel that's kind of interesting oh wow um yeah and he's been an anti-brexit activist not surprising um yeah this looks really good i'll have to find it now you said it's on tubi yep yeah, okay. I seen it popped up on Tubi, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is the one Brandon talked about." So I had to watch it. Mm, yeah, and it's I found that I've been really craving some found footage, and I probably because Tim Davis for um, what is it? Dummies oh of my horror. God. Thank you, Dummies of Horror. Um, he does a found footage segment now, and I really dig it. Um, yeah. He talked about Afflicted, which is one of the ones I really enjoy. Good Same. Canadian found footage. Good Canadian found footage uh, film about Europe. Yeah. You know what's funny is when. He said he was going around Europe. He's like, and this guy goes around Europe. I'm like, he's going to say Heather went to Europe <laughs> <laughs> to like continue on. But he uh, did. That's okay. But yeah. Uh, speaking of Tim Davis, Tim Davis, I think you should do this for your found footage segment. Just it's on Tubi. Just give it a watch. I think uh, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it. Just go in knowing it's low budget. 
yeah, I I am definitely curious to hear his thoughts on it. I think it would be uh, be cool to see. Yeah. So we had talked about this before. So for what's new, Scott came up with Erica and himself and me and George and Amber and Dave went on a ghost walk. And we went to a place called the Hermitage Ruins. So to give you an idea, Hermitage Ruins is our one of the kind haunted tour into the forest at night is what the website um, promotes it as. Beginning at the rarely open Gatehouse Museum and then abandoning light for darkness, ending in a hidden place filled with history, legends and ghost stories. Features voices from the woods, shadows following the tour, and experiences over generations of visitors and the home of Hamilton's most known legend. So, Scott, what did you think of our little ghost tour adventure? And you can say what Erica thought, too, if you want to add her thoughts in here, too. Yeah, I'll say, like, uh, we both had fun with this. Um, Like, obviously, I am more skeptic than a believer. Like, I mean, I think it's just because of my way my brain works. I just, I need legit proof. Because, like, I just kind of say, oh, that could be something else. Uh, Erica definitely leans a little more towards Believer than I do. Because she's experienced some things. Um, for me, though, yeah, I was a, I'm was a skeptic. So, I, what, I, while I believed the history, there was definitely some ghost stories to kind of just get the mood going. What I felt like, kind of like Campfire Tales. And I, I know she enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was really cool. I love the setting of going into these woods. I loved the ruins. Like, I didn't feel anything creepy Mm -hmm. at all, but I still just enjoyed the stories he was telling. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed uh, just the history of it. And yeah, like, this is totally my type of setting. Deep in the woods, abandoned ruins with, like, a history and story and one thing i found to be quite amusing was there were a lot of people that were either feeling something or just getting spooked uh, creeped out by it by the whole thing and the animals in the woods that were moving around behind oh, that came at the perfect time and like made oh, everybody yeah. jump and freak out i loved it yeah so, so like, i had such, i did have a lot of fun with this it's hard to paint the stage of how perfect it was yeah because unless you were there right so I walk in this area all the time. It's part of a 40 kilometer, for you Americans, about 20 miles of trails. And the Hermitage has a very, very long history. So there's certain stories that I couldn't agree with Scott Moore. Total nonsense. Things that are true. So right now, it's actually, it's been rebuilt. So the ruins have actually been restored. So they have the outline of the mansion. It's not the full mansion, because the mansion burned down. But there was a time where people would go out to the Hermitage, but people stopped going because of cults meeting there. That was a well-known yeah, problem. That that, right? one, that part right there really intrigued me. Yeah. So that I don't know if they did animal sacrifices and stuff like that, but I do know that the police were called there many a times. Um, and there was multiple reports of incidences. Now, it's also been featured on Creepy Canada, which is a TV show. And I do believe that some creepy stuff has happened. So there's one part that is a little removed off to the side. It's like, a, I guess, where the guest house or whatever the, the whatever barn would be in. There's yeah, a legend. The bathhouse? The bathhouse. And there was a, a, the rich family that lived there, there was a servant that fell in love with the niece that was staying with the family that lived there. And he wanted to marry her. And, of course, the father or the uncle refused marriage because not going to happen. And he hung himself. The, the young man. So the ghost tour gentleman was telling a story about a mother who took her daughter there to do a Kodak moment because there's this little window seal that you can kind of sit behind, look in from, and people can take a picture. And as she took up her lens, there was an image of a ghostly man coming at his at her daughter with her hands extended, his hands extended. So the reason why I'm telling this long drawn out story is because without me sharing this experience to this storyteller earlier, I and my friend Anne had gone to that exact same spot two years earlier. And we had our dogs with us who were kind of like acting a little weird in the area, to be honest with you. They weren't overly thrilled. And Anne's like, oh, you know, you should. these are all the creepy things. You should go around the where this little girl sat, go, you know, whatever time this was that this guy heard the story about, and I'll take your picture. It was a hot day. Scotty had just come back from visiting. I think it was the Monday after Scotty left the first time. And it was hot, 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 hot. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I walk around 
And now this was not in an enclosed area. So this wasn't in between cement. It was outside the cement. I stood outside this window. And from the right of me, I felt what could only be described as, as Arctic air. I felt like someone turned on an AC and I was literally centimeters away from it. And it was blowing into my fucking full side of my body. And I'm posing for this picture and I'm like, and can you please take the fucking picture? <laughs> because I was getting really creeped out. I still have the picture. Um, anyway, leave. I'm like, I, I, we need to leave here. I'm just not feeling comfortable. So when he told the story about this gentleman's ghost coming to this little girl on the same side in the same spot that I had my experience, I was like, Scott, I'm going to make you a believer like the X-Files. So that was my own personal experience with that situation. Um, and, you know, we can point to tons of things, but it was fucking hot as hell. It was outside of the cement walls, so technically it shouldn't have been that cold. It should have still been warm because it wasn't cold on the left side. <laughs> And right. there was no wind. <laughs> so it was a very, very creepy feeling. Could be happenstance, could be something more. But it was very good storytelling. And the tickets are quite reasonable. Like, it's only $15 Canadian for this. So, like, 50 cents American is what Rob is. <laughs> but I think that's a pretty good deal for what we got. We got, a, what, an hour and a half, almost two hours of a tour and stories. and Yeah, I thought it was really, uh, really fun. Like, uh, yeah. I liked, I think I liked this one more than I did the uh, Hamil downtown Hamilton one, just because, yeah. for one, we didn't have no drama. insane drama experiences going on, which he, we talked to that uh, tourist about, or the tour yeah, guy about. Yeah, we did. Like, he had knew, he knew about it because of, like, people complaining and you sending in the message that you did about it. Yeah. And, uh, so My like, supportive uh, message of yeah. how, like, yeah, we had some people that wanted to be problems. Yeah, and I did just left it all well, well left alone, but they didn't. And I did love the fact that he asked us to be an angry mob, and no one did besides me. And I chimed in. Rah, 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 rah. Oh my god, it was the best! <laughs> it was the best. He loved you. You were definitely making the tour that much better. So it was it was a lot of fun. Um, these these things are always a lot of fun. I'm doing the next tour. So there's one more that I've done all the ones in Hamilton, but they have one at Castle Kilbride, which is a mansion that's about an hour away, a fully indoor traditional ghost tour inside a surprisingly haunted place while surrounded by Victorian beauty and art adorned walls. Featuring the artists who should have been dead, stories of playful young spirits, a haunted antique comes home, and on our theory on how the ghost scared away a local minister. So I will be doing that at the end of July. So I will definitely let you know how that one goes. And yeah, I honestly, I like this company. If you're ever interested, the company's called Ghost Walks. They have Ghost Walks in the Niagara, Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario, Toronto, Ontario area. And honestly, I really, I really have enjoyed them. I think they're really, really solid. Um, I think that they're worth the money you pay. They're, all their tickets are anywhere between 15 or 16 bucks. And for what you get, it's a fun night out. Yeah, that um, was a really good deal for what you get. Right? So definitely recommend it. And it's also obviously a local company. Do you need to go take care of the Dexty? No, I think he's just barking at the uh, people walking up and down the road because it is our uh, festival this weekend. So there's probably uh, a lot of traffic right now. He's like, get the fuck off my fucking road. Did I give you permission to be there? Oh, and he's going to no. be going nuts later because there's going to be fireworks going off. Oh, man. And more fireworks. Yay! Yay! Yep. Yay! I'll be sitting on my front porch watching, because why not? I got a good view from my porch. That's right. Well, we're out of the dark. We're going back to our our trailer talk. So we got three trailers that we uh, <laughs> that we pulled out that we're going to talk about. Do we want to do Boogeyman first? I just put this here. Oh, never mind. Scott has to go handle some bitches, so I'll talk about Boogeyman first. So... Boogeyman is actually being released this weekend. So by the time everyone gets out and hears this episode, Boogeyman will already be out in theaters. So a little bit about the movie Boogeyman. Boogeyman is a 2023 American supernatural horror film directed by Robert Savage from a screenplay from a bunch of people based on the 1973 short story. So it's an adaptation, an adaptation of King's short story, which was first announced in June 2018. So this is based on a Stephen King. I'm just talking about Boogeyman, Scott. Okay. 
what it's coming from and all that kind of stuff. So a short little synopsis, our high school student Sadie Harper and her little Sawyer are reeling from the recent death of their mother. Devastated by his own pain, their father, Will, a therapist by profession, gives them neither the support nor affection that they tried to claim from him. When a desperate patient shows up unexpectedly at their house asking for help, they bring in terrifying entry that plays on the family and feeds off their greatest suffering. I think this movie is going to be about grief from that little phrase and opposites. Mm-hmm. But I saw the preview and I know it's going to be a jumpity jumpity, all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to lie. I think it looks cool. I like movies like this. It reminds me of Smile. I dug Smile and the message behind Smile. Um, I think this movie will be equally well done. If it's a story by Stephen King, it has potential. Not all his movies are great, but the stories tend to be good. Um, Those are my thoughts. What do you think? Yeah, uh, this is the second time I watched the trailer because I've seen it at the theater, like the trailer. I believe it's out this weekend. But um, yeah, I thought this looked pretty good. Had a very creepy atmosphere to it and i am a huge fan of stephen king and will always try to check out any of his stories that have been adapted to the big screen so i'm very curious to see this because yeah a lot of the time his short stories seem to be better than his novels really the films yeah like what else was a short oh that was a short story i didn't know that yep the mist children of the corn even though i like it feels dated now like children of the corn was a short story maximum overdrive was a short story like a lot, like there's a, uh, I think it was a Silver Bullet, I believe, was a short story. Like, mm-hmm. so it all just depends on who is directing and adapt, adapting it to the big screen. But yeah, this I think looks good. Uh, definitely looks like it's very jump scary. But yeah, like you said, reminds me a lot of Smile and the like, and like it's gonna have. Jump scares done right can be really good. Exactly. Like that's why right. I say like reminds me of Smile because Smile did the jump scares really well. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it plays out. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. I'm going to try to go to theaters for sure to watch it. Now, you wanted to bring this next one to the table, so I'll let you talk about this first, because this one looks fucking hilarious. All right, so you're the one that told me to check out this trailer, and you, you, me, and Brandon all watched it together on our video chat one day. And... No, I don't. No, Brandon told us to. Oh, was it Brandon? Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it was you, but uh, yep. So this is the Meg Two. They decided to make a sequel to what was an okayish summer blockbuster fun shark film. Oh my God! They, I think they just realized what they have and are fucking rolling with it this time. Like, cause they realize it's dumb, it's silly. Let is, let's go with that and have Jason Statham fucking w- riding a uh, fucking wave runner while carrying a fucking katana, about ready to slice up the Meg. It's got fucking giant dinosaurs and other monsters that appear. Seems like there's more than one Meg. Oh, man. It looks like it is just going to be just big, dumb fun. And, like, it kind of gives me that cocaine bear vibe where it's like this movie knows exactly Mm -hmm. what it is and is just embracing it. I definitely do not think this movie's taking itself seriously. No. Um, Which I appreciate. You know, I think that that's where the most recent Jurassic Park or world movies went wrong. Yeah. If they just, but you can't be silly with Jurassic Park because that, that series started to be silly. So of course, when you try to make it, I'm sorry, when Jurassic Park started was serious, when you try to make it silly, then it becomes, you know, dumb. I don't think the Meg was ever supposed to be a serious movie. I always thought it was supposed to be a little silly and fun. Um, And I just love that they're going all the way out with this, all the way out. Like I'm just watching the scene again where, you know, the Meg, like, eats a T-Rex, yep. which is hilarious. <laughs> um, never would get that close to shore, but that's not the point. And, like, Jason Statham's just being Jason fucking Statham. Like, that's all yeah. he's doing, you know? And bless his Fast and Furious money heart. And bore, <laughs> and what's the other movie that he was in? Um, Crank? Yep, Crank. Uh, like, he's always just been, like, that action star. And right. he's just kind of embracing that role in a silly giant shark movie. Fuck yes, I am in. Yeah, and I and I kind of respect that about him. Like, he's not pretending to be something he's not. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, yeah, this is a dumb movie. Yeah, I'm going to do fucking over-the-top shit. Yep, and Watch it or don't. And it's absolutely perfect for summer. Mm-hmm. This is definitely a summer blockbuster that Tim will take his kids because... Because kids Sharks. can watch everything. Sharks. <laughs> right. And like, I don't know. I think it'll be fun in the big in the big screen and all that other shit. And like, and the music that 
they have playing in the background of the trailer is really, really funny, too. Yeah. Like, it's well done. It really is. So, I'm pumped. I'll definitely watch it. Why not? How could you not? And, yeah, it should be entertaining. Now, I chose the last one. And you know what I'm excited about this one? Is I was watching it, and I'm like, is that, is that PETA? Is that who I think it is? It's PETA, isn't it? Who? You never saw The Hunger Games? Oh, I watched the first one, but like I don't remember anything from it. I swear to fucking God. Why do you not do anything that's pop culture? Like, why can't you just well, be normal? I'd, I'd rather watch Battle Royale, which is what Hunger Games ripped off. Okay, sure. I've seen Battle Royale too, and it didn't fully rip it off, by the way. Because Hunger Games is a whole society. This is just like a... Yeah, anyway. But it's PETA from Hunger Games, and it kind of looks like a mix between... Uh, what was the one with Nicolas Cage? Uh, Willy's Wonderland. And Banana Splits. Yeah. They're going it looks with... like a lot of fun. I'm not going to yeah. lie. So what we're talking about is Five Nights at Freddy's. Sorry, I didn't get to it yet. Five Nights at Freddy's. So Freddy's is supposed to be like this pizza joint, I think it is, like a Chuck E. Cheese kind of thing. And Pita is in this role. And there's just a little teaser trailer, but fuck, it looks entertaining. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a Bloomhouse movie, and it's based off of the children's horror game Five Nights at Freddy's, the video game. And yeah, in the video game, you play as the... Uh, you play as like the night overnight security guard and the game looks boring as hell. I've never actually played it, but uh, I've watched videos and it's, you're basically just watching security camera footage and the animatronics start moving around the room and trying to get to you. So you got to like time it right and lock the doors and stuff like that to keep yourself safe and survive the night. So I, I like what this is doing. It looks like it's taking that aspect, but cranking it up as more of a horror film. Like obviously it's going to be, Probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it's PG-13, because I don't think it had a rating, but... uh, Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a rated R type of film, for sure. I agree. But it definitely looked like in the trailer there was, like, some Saw-style traps and things like that going on, and it looked creepy, and I'm oh, totally down for animatronics coming to life and just make, like, a fun, fluffy horror film, and this is going to be perfect because it's out October 27th, so right around spooky season. Spooky titan. I can't wait till people just talk about spooky titan. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm feeling this movie. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fucking fun. That's yeah. what I think. I think it's going to be a fun film, easy to watch, where I think the boogeyman is going to have a deeper message in it. Yeah. And I think the Meg is having no message in it. It's <laughs> nope. fuck you. We'll put together a cheesy fucking movie if we want to, and you can suck our dicks. It's basically what I think the Megan's saying. Pretty much. <laughs> um, which I respect the game right there, honestly. Why not? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it will be. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to all three of these. Like, there's we're getting we're uh, starting to see more trailers of things that uh, are coming out theatrically that have me excited. Right. Yeah, I think it's I think we're getting to see some really, really good shit coming. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm down the pound. I'm uh, I'm ready for it. Me too. I'll say like I know I definitely want some more good theatrical horror films. Yeah, I feel like it's been a slow year as we've talked about. I wouldn't say it's been a horrible year because I'm gaslit. Um, (laughs) But I do think we need to see some stronger stuff. And I do think that with these films and some of the other trailers we watched before, we're going to start to see that a little bit more, which will be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, like, I think I may have like a, at this point, finally a top 10 that I would be happy to have, but it's definitely not where I'd be struggling. Like I was last year trying to make my top 10. Cause they were like struggling as in there were so many good films last year. Now you're just struggling because, you know, time to watch movies. Like, our our watch lists are not what they used to be, people. They We were used to be considered just lower than Mark Nato and others. Yeah, but like I am. My, have we have fallen. Yeah, because right now I am one away from 70 films. I am at 69 films. And it's, I am at 95. Yeah, so that's, and you're on track doing pretty good me i have definitely just kind of pulled back a bit but you know i usually tend to do that around this time of year and then i kind of jump full force into it over the next couple of months yeah so we'll see if that happens again and right like i'm also being more picky too there's movies that i've seen that we got screeners for that i'm like no yeah like die influencer there's one that was like about a cheerleader that gets kidnapped and like no oh i thought that was 
this influencer film that we've no oh okay no they're different oh so ignore ignore me earlier when i said die influencer i was like i was like i don't think it's a dutch film but hey whatever you know that's cool um yeah it doesn't matter scott it's all good in the hood but yeah i you know there's that i should have watched motion detection detected but site what matt thinks that i and i should destroy and I shouldn't have watched uh, Dungeon earlier today. Dungeon? Oh, yeah. man, that sounds horrible. Hold on, let me look it up. Oh. Is it 2023 or is it yep, 2023? Yeah, it was 2023 I found okay. on Tubi, and the only reason I watched it is because it was like Dungeon. 65 minutes long or something like that. Okay, a light hard suspense thriller about a real estate agent taken prisoner by a deranged tenant? Yep. <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> This is low budget. Yeah, low budget, really bad acting. I should have watched the trailer, but I didn't, and I kicked myself for that one. How far did you get through this? I watched it all the way because I had oh. it playing. I had it playing at work, like I said. The only reason I watched it is because I wanted something short, and I was like, "Hey, it's sixty-two minutes, perfect." Oh, it was filmed in New Jersey. I wonder if Brandon was in it. <laughs> Probably was. Um. So what happened? Did they did the real estate get out? Real estate agent get out? Yeah. Okay. But no, 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 don't even worry. Don't even waste your time. Tim Walker gave it a one. That's what I gave it. <laughs> did it make you as mad as Skinnamarink and Endsmen made me? No, it didn't make me mad. It was just more like, oh, this movie's bad. Where Skinnamarink, I'm going. Why the fuck do people like this movie? <laughs> <laughs> like, why stop trying to be unique and different? We get it. Fuck, we get it. Ooh, you're so special. Ooh, you're so unique. Wow, look at you. Wow, yay. I'd rather watch my friend's daughter jump on a fucking trampoline than watch some of those movies again. <laughs> right. Fuck my life. At least it'd be more entertaining. Anyway, well, don't watch Dungeon. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I well, can tell from that. <laughs> that that's cover. why I left it off the list, because I was like, man. Yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, but yeah. got me one more movie closer to 70, so whatever. <laughs> one more movie closer. Well, this concludes the 82nd episode of the Friday Nightmare Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to Matt and Tim and Sander Kane for being such good sports. Um, all of them have excellent podcasts. We plugged Matt's already, but um, Dummies of Horror is an excellent podcast. If you're not a patron, I recommend signing up to be one. If not, you can find them on Spotify, iTunes, I don't know, anywhere that you find podcasts. And uh, Sandra Kane is part of the Cemetery Gates podcast, another excellent podcast, another excellent podcast. Please check them out. Big shout out to Darren Wilson, so the Psychosomatic podcast from our Legion Brother and Sister Podcast Network. Um, we are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we are underneath the Kill the Cast feed. Uh, Legion Podcast has Patreon, which allows you to get extra go in for codes and bonus episodes and listen to really smart podcasters. And Scotty, yes. can you believe that maybe there's people out there that aren't patrons yet? What? 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 Like, what? If you could say one thing to them right now, what, what would it be? What, 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 what are you waiting for? Why aren't you joining yet? Come on, join us. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Dexter's behind you right now, and he's like, I'm waiting to take a fucking shit, dude, and you still are talking. That's what I'm waiting for. So please join us today, and please listen to all the other awesome podcasters we talked about. Um, they're the bomb digs, and they have good taste in movies, unlike Scott and me. Well, not Scott, unlike me. You know, I just, <laughs> just that ugly duckling with my other little troll, Rob Humphreys. And together, we are Humphrey. Oh, and check out Rob Humphrey's new podcast. Um, the, what is it? The fuck you Nicholas Cage podcast is, let me get the name of it. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we forgot to pump oh, yeah. Rob's podcast. Oh no. Now I gotta look it up. I have it saved because I follow him because I'm a friend. Have you listened to it? Not yet. <gasps> oh. I'm still playing catch up on a bunch of other podcasts. Oh no. Where is it? Nicholas. Maybe I'll have to look into my podcast that I follow. It's so awesome. Oh my God. This oh. is such a horrible moment right now. Let me see if I can help find it. Yeah, please. I need you to find it right now because uh, I look like a big dick. You have to cut out all the silence of us scrabbling through our phones being like, Rob, do you see this, Rob? Your your take team person didn't even care. 
He's going to be so mad. He's going to be like, how did you not remember my podcast? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you got it? It's a I'm... fuck you, Nicolas Cage, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. It is the as the Nick effing woo cage cast. F- Nick effing woo cage cast. So they cover Nick Cage films. Oh my god, that took 20 minutes for us to talk about. Rob is not going to be pleased with us at all. Um, but remember, Rob, I was the one that remembered. And I've listened to both episodes because I'm a friend. Maybe you should consider joining the NWO, Rob. No, Maybe. no. Rob is too cool to join an old uh, fogey faction like that. I don't know, Rob. Who's a real friend here? That's the question you need to be asking. Rob, but him and... Remember, I'm the one that always recommends the gems to you. <laughs> Without Scott, there's many good movies you wouldn't have watched this year. It's true. All right? Scott is actually a hero. So check out that podcast. It is awesome. It is Rob and his co-host Kat. And if you like Nick Cage movies, it's a pretty fun podcast. And Rob's such a good podcaster. He has such he an amazing podcasting voice, um, which he has. He has something. I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing but my ability to make fun of other people and then put ointment on their wounds. So, but I'm very lucky to have such great podcasters that I know that show me how it's done. So thank you to everyone as always for listening. We will be back again with more suggestions, um, more suggestions from the Shuddy, the Netflix VOD, and hopefully some theater watches. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So do you have anything to say to the good people, Scott? Uh, so until next time, kitties, remember, not all heroes wear clothes. <laughs> Unpleasant dreams. See ya. Not all heroes wear clothes. <laughs> Aww.